Welcome to Judgment and Transparency Ministry International, where God changes life. With everyone, welcome once again in our today's program and thank you for being with us. Thank you for taking our time to watch our video once again. Uh, today I have here with me uh, a man of God, uh, uh, Pastor marvelous. So he's here to give us a teaching. You know, we are really God has impacted him with a lot of God of wisdom for us. So uh, before he comes in, let us pray in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful program. Thank you for the opportunity of our Father King of Glory to be here with our children and have a way. Our Father speak to us in the manner that we understand. Use your vessel to invite us in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm. Good day, everyone. I'm here to throw more light and brief to us about faith. Firstly, faith, according to Hebrew 11, verse 1, is the assurance of things hoped for, but not yet seen. In the Bible, Abraham and Sarah, at their old age, didn't have a child. But God told them that they will have a child. And they accepted it. But people come around and tell her that she's already old, that her husband is just so old to be pregnant and, and they don't have hope of having children. But God has given Abraham and Sarah the courage and the trust in him because they commune every day by day with God. So Abraham and Sarah already know that God will do something for, for them. So, as all we know that at last God gave Abraham the child. Now, coming to reality now, as a sinner, when you are being told about the truth that Christ died for us at the cross of Calvary because of our sins, and after accepting God, we all have this mentality that when we are not a child of God, Miracle begins to happen, you build a house, buy a car, but it's not like that. You will first work for God and God will test you to know the faith in you. He might come with maybe disease to know whether your faith is in him or you accepted him so to gain something through him. So now when you have faith, God will tell you maybe in your dreams, you will you see yourself having children, having houses. But due to God has given you faith and you have, you have faith and trust in Him because faith and trust work hand to hand because when you have faith in someone, you also trust that that person is capable of doing something or the other. So when you keep on hoping on God and having assurance that God will do something for you, you will see it happening. And now, we all Christians, we go to church on Sundays, we sit at the front of the sea of the the, the audience and the, the, before the pulpit so that God will perform a miracle for us. Every day we will pray, pray, pray and we think that when God has, has come into our life that we will just make it like that. No, you have to also evangelize to people because how you knew the truth and you accepted it, you have to go around to people and tell them the truth. And when you are evangelizing to someone, you will say you have to have the faith that God is speaking through you. But if you see yourself mere mortal, you just want to do it for doing sake, it will not work. But when you have faith that God will do something on the appointed day, you will see that person that you are pushing to becoming a child of God. So I, I encourage you guys to have faith in God because He is, he is not a one being like us. Yes, I know that we all have feelings and as one being where you stay, say you be, you be hungry, you be seeing people doing things when you come for an occasion, you are the lowest, your clothes, you are, you are not paying your children's fees at the right time. But have faith in God because it's not a must that you must be rich because they say what is, greater, what is, in, in, me, is in me is greater than that of the world. When you have Christ in you, at the end time, because at the end time, you you wouldn't go to heaven with money, because if heaven is being done, how rich you are, 
like meaning the poor people are all going to hell. But what you have in you, that is the spirit of God, who directs you, who, who, who direct you and shows you what you do is greater than that that are in other people. And there is difference between working with God and working for God. Working with God means when you're working hand to hand, when he takes a step, you, you take the next step. When he takes a step, you take the next step. And through that, you'll be hardly hurt by your enemies. Because before your enemies try to set a plan for you, God will reveal it for you. But working for God, like all these nowadays, the prophets, they go to one place or the other, taking strength, then they will come to the congregation and begin to deceive people, telling them that, yeah, yes, God did this, God did this. They are working for God, but they are not working with God. Maybe they have gotten their information and on all their strategies from one kingdom or the other, then they will come and recoup it, doing some, some form of miracle, and people will believe it. But God is trying to tell us that He Himself does the miracle. When you go inside and seek the face of God, you will see that he is he is the one that, that is doing the those miracles because now people prophets are taking the glory by themselves after they have performed miracle they will say oh i did this i did this because they don't have faith that god will give them the power to perform those miracles that is why they are going around looking for powers and the other authorities so they can perform miracles like this happened a story of when a family, a high, a well known and respected man of God, his son just had one day he was playing basketball and had a heart attack. And the, the parents were like, they were, they were so, they, they, after going to the medical, after going to the hospital, there was no cure for the, for the heart attack. So they began to pray, they began to pray, they were praying, they were praying. People came from many angles, giving them suggestion of what to do about their son's, their son's illness. People are telling them that their son is slipping away from their hand, and they should act fast. But they didn't welcome the idea because they have faith and trust in God. But at, at the point, the man didn't know what to do. A pastor came to him and advised him he should take him to a herbalist and he said no that God is capable of doing wonders and miracles. So at the junction, the boy was every time he put on his clothes. But one day he came, the boy had a revelation and a man was telling him that his illness was not unto death, but to show and test his parents the faith that they have and the trust they have in him. So at the junction, one day the boy was gasping, he wanted to die. So immediately the father and the mother they don't have any they don't have any eyes, they don't have anything to do. But we have to take the boy and stay the boy. So the wife asked the man, where are you taking this boy to? He then told him he don't do he don't just know. Then he called a, a pastor and the pastor that gave him the idea of taking him to the herbalist, he called the pastor and told him where is the direction to the herbalist house. So when they got there, the man was mixing some herbals, doing some kind of or some kind of incantation. And the pastor earlier told him that the man uses Bible to preach. So but when he got there, he was seeing scores of skeletons. So at the junction, the man mixed one of the harbor and told the parents that when he drops that harbor into the mouth of the boy that he will jump up and he will be well. So the man told him that he should go ahead with his job because they don't have any other hope. So when the man did it, it couldn't work. So the harbourist said that he is and that the wife is the cause of the problem. So the, the wife went. Then the harbourist told the man that he should say that the God of the house, that is all those skeletons and I rewarded, can only save the child. So the man did it because lack of faith and the boy died. So this story is trying to tell us that 
we should have faith in God because almost at the end time, we just lose hope that God cannot help them, that God cannot be of any help to them. But today I'm trying to tell you that God will keep you as long as so you keep on testing, you keep on testing you till the end. Before you then maybe either you give up or you keep on praying, asking God for more grace, then God will show you that He's capable of doing everything. So I'm 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 trying to give you guys more encouragement on faith and trust because we are more than this. You can just give up at any time, but God is trying to tell us that we should keep on him he, because he said that the thought he has for us is for good and not for bad. So if God is thinking good towards us, when he, he, he comes to an illness, it will never lead you to death, but he's trying to test your faith. So that's what I'm just trying to bring you guys on faith. Thank you. Thank you, man of God. And your word just inspired me now. You know, it's opened my eyes to something. You know, most times we sing this song, Abraham, blessings are mine. You know, without singing the opposite, in the sense that, what about the Abraham sufferings? Before Abraham actually got a blessing, there was a time he, he, he encountered difficulties. So your word just opened my eyes that faith is not just, I'll get this and you got it immediately. That faith means that even in the midst of testing and trials, I will keep on trusting in God, right? Because uh, uh, the Abraham, as a man of faith, the, the person by uh, God used as a man of faith, you know, to illustrate you know, the, the story of a, of a man that has faith in God. If you watch his lifestyle, he was he was called out from his father's land to a promised land. And the first time he left out his father's land, the first thing he made was a famine in another land. He made a farmer in another land, and you know, from her, he became hungry. At the time, he went back to where he was. He, he was like, oh, it's, it's better I go to, to back to where I belong. You know, he was trying to go back to Egypt, but God called him back. And if you find out, God promised him generations, multitude of children, but he never gave birth. Even in his 70, he wasn't able to produce. In his 80s, he wasn't able to produce. Even the wife has entered into menopause and uh, they weren't able to produce until he got to 100 years, right? Even Sarah was 90 years, which is beyond the age of giving birth, you know. Medically speaking, it is impossible. But you find out that even in all this time taken, this man faith keep on standing. And when you are speaking, you are trying to illustrate the idea of uh, having interaction with God. In the sense that you don't have to depend on, on preachers. You have to depend because you made something up about you try to illustrate the difference between working for God and working with God. You are trying to tell us there are there are a lot of fake preachers that got their power from different places. Though they are doing the works of God. That means they are working for uh, working for God, but they are not working with God. So the most important thing is working with God. Abraham worked with the Lord. I'm um, um, in Enoch who walk with God. So if you find out these are the people, the men of faith, the men that walked with God. And how did they walk with God? I, I begin to understand something else, and that's your message, in the sense about walking with God in order for it to strengthen your faith. Those people that walked with God, they stand even in the face of difficulties. Because whenever it seems as if they are losing their faith, whenever it seems as if they are being with that, God comes in to strengthen them. You know, and that was exactly what happened in the life of Jesus. At the time, Jesus became weak because of what he knew he is about to pass through. But the Bible says, and the Lord sent his spirit, his angel, and they strengthened him. So that was exactly what Abraham experienced because he was working with who? God. Abraham's faith was not as a result of being perfect. It, has, it is as a result of working with God. So, man of God, can you give us... A little explanation on working with God. Okay. Working with God, what you need to understand is you will communicate and commune with God daily. Okay. During your covenant time. He will speak to you as a father. He will tell you, do this, do that, or don't do it. Yes, I want you to do it. That is working with God. You have close intimacy with Him. That without God you can't do anything. That without God you are not going 
further back to the world of sins. That is walking with God. You are closely, like, you are, you are still together to God's heart. Because he is the creator of the whole universe and he created you. And without him, you can't live. That is me. That is me of working with God. Oh, all right, all right. I get something now. I'm getting something for that. So now, these people that did perfect, someone like Abraham, it was because he has that a close relationship. He was interacting with God, and God was speaking to him. So whenever he speaks, he wants to come down. God will speak to him. And now I, I came to understand something. You know, when you you somebody is about to is to do something for you. And you are not seeing that person. At a time, you are about to lose hope that this person is not going to do it. But when somebody you are seeing tells you he is going to do this thing, because you are seeing him, you are having hope. Or can ever he stay here? He will still do that thing, right? So that is so. Working with God will help you to strengthen your faith because whenever you are about to be down, God will come. Like for instance, I would like us to go to the Bible in order to understand what the man of God actually said in the book of Genesis, in Genesis 15. After this, Genesis 15 from verse 1, I read, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham, I am your shield and your very great reward. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who, who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. So if you watch here, Abraham is now losing faith. Abraham is about to fall, I know, because he has waited and waited for a long time. The thing is not forthcoming. The promise, I've not been to the promised land. I've not uh, occupied the whole land. I've not inherited the whole land like you say. Okay, the little things you've given to me, the riches and the rest of them, there is no hair to inherit it. Remember when Abraham was saying this thing, he did, even uh, um, um, Ishmael has not been, was not born. None of them has been born. Even Isaac and Ishmael was not born. Praise God. So, um, and, and, and Abraham said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my head. Now, look at that encouragement the man of God is trying to tell us that we will get when we are working with God, when the Spirit of God is interacting with us, when He is the one you know, speaking to us, when He is the one leading us, when we have that relationship with Him. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If you use Amplified Version to study that place, He said, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the ministration that comes from the lips of the Messiah. So, God has to be the one to speak to you for you to get faith. God has to be the one to talk to you for you to get faith. And God cannot talk to you if you don't have that relationship with Him, if you don't walk with Him. So, the only way to stand in the face of difficulties like Abraham's too is to have that relationship with God, is to have that walking, talking relationship with God. So, look at what Abraham said. Then the word of the Lord, uh, then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your head, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your head. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord and it, and it was credited to him as righteousness. So the belief, the faith of Abraham came as a result of God speaking to Abraham. And God could not have spoke to Abraham if Abraham did not interact with him. So that is what the man of God is trying to say. So the only way to have faith, even in the faith of difficulty, the only way to stand is to have that relationship with God. You know, faith does not mean, oh, I want to get a car and I got it. No, that is not faith. Oh, I need a house and I got it. No, that is not faith. Oh, I need a house and I got it. That is not faith. Faith means believing and standing with God even in the face of, in the face of difficulties. Believing that God is going to fulfill his promise, he's going to fulfill that thing he said he will do. Even in the face of difficulties, even when it seems that all things have gone wrong. So that was what Abraham did. And Abraham could not have experienced such a thing if 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 if, if, uh, if the, the Lord did not speak to him. The only way Abraham was able to experience this thing was because God spoke to him. And after speaking to him, 
He got encouraged. And the Bible says he believed the Lord and it was corrected unto him as righteousness. So my brethren, like the man of God has enlightened, I would like us to have that relationship with God. And uh, man of God, can you tell us how you got your how you relate with the Spirit of God? I do that daily during my covenant time. Okay. Can um, you just talk about the covenant time? What is that covenant time? Because many people might not understand that language. That covenant time is a time being set apart from the 24 hours in a day. Maybe either you choose say maybe 8 30 or or 3 o'clock, any time. But you keep it regular and stable every day. And when you come in His presence, you pour out your heart. You, you, you like you, you are an empty vessel, but when you come to the Lord, He refuses you back and you go out and take it to other people. So during your covenant time, God will remove you. And you take out those things that are not all to be in you and put new things and fresh things in you. And through that covenant time, maybe you take it one Bible verse and I will read it and a still voice will be talking to me, ministering to me, explaining that verse for me, telling me everything. And maybe I'm having a difficulty, God will just tell me the solutions to it. And when I go to bed, I'll just have revelation about the solution or something there about then that's how I communicate with God every day. Oh my God, I thank you for this wonderful explanation. Because this thing you just said uh, uh, remind me of what happened in the Bible in the book of um, in the book of uh, Luke twenty. Um, I think uh, Luke twenty two. Two twenty two from verse thirty one. Thirty nine. If you read that prayer, Jesus went out as usual to the mountain of Olive, and his disciples followed him. And reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. And he would draw about a stone through, through beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. And the angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. So if you watch, Jesus was in a difficulty. But when it is his time, he went there, Bible said, he went out as usual. So that means he always do that thing. It's something he do frequently. So he went, just like he said, it might be probably, you can probably call it to do his covenant time, to observe his time. And that was when he tabled the problem, you know, he is a kind of, uh, I'm saying to the Lord, if you are willing, take this body away from me. And God spoke to him. God edified him. He sent his angel. To come and strengthen him, just like he said, God can speak to him and ask you to go to a passage, a passage in the Bible, and from there he will give you his solution. Or after talking to him, after communing with him, go to bed, and uh, maybe he can he can give you a dream and show you a solution to your problem. That was how God Jesus was in the fight. So if Jesus has that time, why won't we have that time? Bible said, I live because of the Father. Whoever that will live will live because of me. So that means we we'll have to do the same thing he does. So he has, he has a relationship. With the Father. So he has that covenant time, he's communion with God. That was how he got to relate with God. That is how he got to be walking with God, taking a step after God has taken his own. One after the other. So I believe God will help us to understand this message. Thank you for listening once again. Thank you uh, for being with us. I pray that the Spirit of God will speak to you more and help you to understand more. So you can log into our YouTube channel and subscribe for you uh, in, in, in the channel so that you get more updates whenever we release a teaching and whenever we have something spectacular to say so that you can, you can be. And also you can help us to share this message, help us to spread the gospel of Christ because uh, he said, go into the world and make the disciples of all nations and it's my work, it's your work to do. So if you know anything you can do to make this message to get to other people, I, I, I pray that the Lord will help you to do so. So once again, my name is Ezra Patrick Emmanuel, and here with me is um, Marvelous, Marvelous uh, um, the Lady. So uh, I pray that the Lord will help you to understand the message in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen.